Revelation, first chapter. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> two, two young ladies were, were talking. And the conversation went kind of like this. Uh, one young lady said, well, what's up with this guy? Do you really like him that much? Yes, honey, I love him. He is fine. He does a lot of nice things for me. Then her friend replied, I know he used to do nice stuff for you. But what has he done for you lately? Uh, you may recognize that as the uh, Janet Jackson song. She was talking to a young lady and she said, But what has he done for you lately? Uh, I don't think Janet was mad this morning. I want to borrow that for my text title this morning. What have you done for me lately? Gratitude has a short memory. George Oswell said that a man receiving charity always hates his benefactor. It's a fixed characteristic of human nature. I call it the pride factor. We would much rather do things for ourselves. So when we are the recipients of an unearned blessing, we tend to discount it quickly and conceal our appreciation. It's not that we don't appreciate the things that are done for us. We just don't like that feeling of obligation that comes with receiving something you don't deserve and didn't earn. Let me tell you this story. About a married man who fell on hard times when his wife and children contracted pneumonia with one woman. The doctor bills were eating him alive. The landlord threatened to evict him if he didn't pay his rent on time, fearing that his family would be cast out into the cold winter with nowhere to go. He found a part-time job to supplement his income, working day and night. He was able to keep his bills paid but burning the count at both ends was taking a toll on his own head. His daytime boss noticed that his performance on the job was suffering. So he approached him one afternoon and asked, Is there anything I can do to help? When the boss heard the employee's story, he was moved with compassion and offered to pay the doctor bills. The worker gracefully accepted. Two years later, the factory caught fire. The boss had to close down for three weeks for renovation. When the factory found reopened, he found himself seriously behind in Philadelphia. The boss asked everyone to work a few extra hours a week without overtime to pick up the slack 
and get the business.